I wonder if any of you have on your computer or on your iPad received one of those e-cards which are becoming increasingly fashionable. When the screen opens, an angel appears. Blonde, beautiful. Clearly this is not a card for the international market. <laughs> the instruction beneath the angel reads, click on the angel. And when you click on the angel, she comes to life. A beatific smile crosses her face. Her blue eyes open and the tune, Silent Night, begins to play. And then her wings start to flap and she flies across the room to the Christmas tree. And once she's there, she flies around the tree, lighting up each of the candles on the tree. There's no health and safety concerns there at all. It's very easy. And, and then she pauses by one of those beautiful, bright, round, shiny Christmas baubles. And as she looks at the side of the decoration, wonderfully, the shepherds appear. And the tune changes to the first Noel. And then she flies across to another ball. And as she looks at this one, there's the Magi there. And the tune changes to We Three Kings. And then she goes on to the third ball. And then there's a silhouette of the Holy Family. And the tune changes to Away in a Manger. And then she flies across to the window and she waves her wand and the Bethlehem star appears in the sky. Her work complete, she flutters across to the Christmas tree and gently lowers herself onto the top, whilst on the screen the words, Seasons Greetings, appear. Now, I'm really sorry if you've sent me an electronic Christmas card this year. In fact, a friend of mine's here. He sent me one just yesterday, and I sent him an email yesterday apologizing for what I was going to say about his card. <laughs> but as you have gathered, I'm not a great fan of them. It's too easy to write a Christmas letter and then just click send to all, and off they go. It's too easy to download a Christmas card, such as I've been talking about. It's an actual card. I looked it up in one of the catalogues. And then just alter the name each time and click it and off it flies. And I think of the person who used to have a row of Christmas cards on her mantelpiece. And now she's got an empty space and a few files on her computer. And I'm not at all sure that that is what Christmas is all about. And the Bishop of Hartford agrees with me. If any of you are Anglicans, that's a really good thing, isn't it, that a bishop agrees with me. In a headline in the Times newspaper on November the 5th, it says, the heading, E-cards kill festive spirit, says Bishop. And the bishop launched what he called a campaign for real Christmas cards. After warning that Christmas cards were not only killing the Christmas spirit, they were also hurting charitable giving. To quote his words, it's important to remember that human connection and reaching out to one another is a basic human need. When God reached out to humanity, it was not through an email or an e-card. It was not through sending either a message or a messenger. It was not by sharing an idea or by constructing a new theology. No, God reached out to us, reached out to me, reached out to you through taking our flesh by coming to a womb and a world, by a dangerous birth, a refugee childhood, a working man's occupation, and then by three years of stunning living and teaching. 
the end of those three years, the reason that the wise men brought myrrh as one of the gifts to the stable, a spice used for anointing the dead, became clear. As through misunderstanding and misrepresentation, through spitting and scourging and suffering, through writhing with pain, through gasping for breath, and through death, Jesus entered into the very worst of our human experience. You see, God reached us through actually being with us in Jesus. A personal God coming in person, sharing in our broken humanity, understanding our joys and our sorrows. As the Christmas carol puts it, with the poor and mean and lowly lived on earth, our Saviour lowly. So if in Jesus God made this personal step, this step from heaven to earth, then what's our response? How do we react to it? I wonder if you've ever had the experience of giving a lot of time to choosing a present for someone that you care for. And you wrap it up beautifully and you put it under the Christmas tree or if they live away, you put it in a paddy bag and you put lots of sort of tape on and you send it off so it doesn't get damaged. But then on Christmas morning, you see the person opening the present and they don't say a word, they simply move on to the next present. <laughs> or if you've sent that present, you never hear another thing. You don't know whether it ever arrived. You don't know whether they liked it or not. The gift was given in love. And all you wanted in response was to know that it was appreciated. It wouldn't matter if they said the scarf was the wrong color or the shirt was the wrong size. The love you offered in giving it was what you wanted appreciated. Well, there was nothing wrong at all with the gift that God gave us at Christmas as Jesus came to be with us. He came in love to Bethlehem. He went in love the way of the cross. He seeks to come in love to your heart and to mine. And all God wants in return is to connect with us in a personal way. To free you from the mess and the muck and the muddle that holds you from the past. To set you free to be the woman or the man God intends you to be in the present. To set you free to look to the future with hope in your heart. All God seeks and longs for is to connect with you in a personal way. So don't send him an e-card. Send him a prayer. Send him the deep longings of your heart. Send him your intention to do the very best you can to love him and serve him and follow him. And do you know, that will be the best Christmas present that you could ever give to God. <laughs> <laughs>